Carlos the Crane lived by a pond that was full of fat, yummy fish. He ate one a day, two, or maybe three. He ate them when he wished. But years passed, he grew old and weak, and the fish grew happy and bold. We swim too fast! You can't catch us! You are finished, you know! They told. If I don't eat, I'll starve, thought Carlos, all scared. I've to come up with a plan to catch some fish, so that I may be spared. One day he stood by the side of the pond, looking downcast and sad. So the wise crab Wawa crawled up to him and asked, Why are you feeling so bad? Oh crab, I heard people talk. They're going to fill this pond with mud. So say your last prayers, for in a few months, you will all be dead. Oh no! cried the fishes. We want to live! It's your help we seek! said the crane. I can take you to another pond, but only if you'll sit in my beak. The fish didn't like this. They didn't trust the crane. But what were they to do? said Carlos. Send one with me, I'll show him the pond. I think that's fair, don't you? The fish agreed and sent Sam, their worst, a naughty little guy. Take him with you, show him the pond. We won't miss him, the little fry. Sam sat in Carlos's beak and they flew a long, long way. They came to a pond, a lovely place where lotuses bloomed day after day. Cried Sam to his friends the minute that they got back. The other fish sighed with relief and each began to pack his bag. The wily crane took two fish in his beak and took off from the old place. We're off to our new home! They shouted. And what a lovely future we face! But hungry Carlos took them not to the lovely pond but off to a big bare hill where he sat them down and started to eat them to his fill. He rested a while and then back he went to take more to their doom. And the fish went willingly with him, each one thinking of his own room. This went on for some time. More fish became food and Carlos grew fat and sleek. The wise crab Wawa saw this happen and thought, I think I see the trick. I've got to save the other fish, thought Wawa. I'll catch him at his game. I'll tell the crane I want to move. And to me too, he'll do the same. Carlos, save me too, wailed Wawa, scrunching up his crabby face. In this lovely pond of yours, I'd like to live my days. Greedy Carlos's face lit up, for he loved fresh crab meat. Smiling, he opened up his large beak and said, Please take your seat. No, no, shuddered the crab. You might drop me, nor will I sit on your back. All right, replied the impatient crane. You can clasp my neck. Off they flew into the deep blue sky, the crab holding on to the crane. Off they flew through clouds and wind as fast as the fastest plane. They flew a while, they flew afar, and then the crane came down. Finally, on the side of a big bare hill, the crab saw a mound of white fish bone. He shook with sobs, he trembled with rage as he saw what was left of his friends. He was mad as fire at the crane's deceit. He swore that he'd make amends. Where is my new home? cried the wily crab. I don't see a pond here. Where are the lotuses and the lily pads? Where are my friends so dear? There is no pond, said Carlos the crane. No flowers, no home, no friends too. I ate your friends and now, wow, the crab, this is the end of you. Not I, you greedy crane, cried Wawa. But you who is going to pay. So saying, he dug his claws deep into the crane's neck all the way.
Carlos the crane fell to the ground, screaming and died of pain. Then Wawa the wise crab made his way back to his native pond again. The fishes welcomed him as a hero, which he truly was. Even as they heard about their friends and cried for their loss. And they listened to him when he said, Friends, you must be careful. You can always take what you need, but greed is always harmful.